Hey everyone, welcome to episode 5. We are on the final episode of this journey. If you've missed the others, click up above and you can watch the playlist. Today I'm about to go on the shakeout run ahead of the half marathon, which is tomorrow. If you don't want to see all that stuff or you just want to get to the juicy stuff, use the chapter markers below to go straight into the half marathon. At this point, obviously, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to put some options on the table. Do you think A, I'm not going to complete it, B, complete the race, C, hit my PB time, or D, absolutely smash it? Put your answers in the comments before you watch and let's see how correct you were. So this is the shakedown run or shake out. What is the correct term? <laughs> We've already done the first K, 6.25, nice and slow. And it's just to get the blood pumping, get the nerves out ahead of tomorrow. We've done 4K, we're kind of averaging around six. This is what we wanted to do. We've got seven minutes left on this. It's a time rather than distance. So, all done. Um, both feeling good. My legs are fine. I do have a little twinge in my left shin, but I get that all the time. And I do have a twinge in my left ankle, which I hurt many years back playing football. I get that all the time. But yeah, honestly, that really is it for today. We're gonna go home, just check logistics for tomorrow. We're gonna go and check our uh, gels, what we're gonna wear, where we need to be, timing, etc. And the next time you're gonna see us, we'll be hopefully either on the way or at the venue. So, see you tomorrow. Here we are, Wednesday morning. <laughs> Finally. No, there are about 2,000 people in, our, in my way, which is where we want. Probably another 2,000 in front, and she's in wave two, cheap. <sighs> So what I've got here is a GPX of the route that I was going to run. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of elevation at the start. So I created a pace pro. My intention with the pace pro was to start out strong. You can see the red areas over there and then progressively get slower over time. I had also configured it so that I could attack the climbs at the start, leaving me an easier run later on where there were less climbs. And these are the splits. I was nearly late to my wave because we're queuing for the toilets. So, made it here. Probably used half my energy to get to this point. But, let's see. I'll just sit at the back and not bother to be close to the front and see how I get on. So that clapping that you can hear is for the start of the actual race. The front runners are setting off at this point. We kind of walk forward and make our way to the front to start. I was waiting for the right moment to start my watch. I started it around here and then had to kind of walk for a bit. And at 9.23 a.m., I'm up and running chip time and also on my watch. It starts with a nice little downhill, which is great as we head to the Strand. So I was kind of feeling optimistic. Everything was great, good start. And I felt I could find some space amongst the crowd. So first K, I'm feeling great. This is a 451. That guy in the green vest, I had made up my mind I was gonna follow him and we were kind of, you know, dodging in and out of people. By lap two, he'd kind of disappeared, but I'd set a really good time. I'm 4.31, I think that's him in the top, but he'd left me behind. We get to lap three, a few climbs, but I'm still doing a 4.36. I'm actually quite pleased with my time. There's lots of entertainment going on. Everything is great. I'm on track for what I'm intending to do at this point, so I have no complaints. Lap four, a 4.34. Again, I'm ahead of my target. My target is a 4.40. So, so far, so good. This is great. It's still a bit crowded. I'm still looking for space and that kind of punishes me in lap five. It gets a bit narrow. And so I end up doing a 4.49. I'm not worried because I feel there's a downhill section coming. As you can see, the people on the right, I felt when I get there, I'll be able to like drag that back. And I did. So in the downhill section, I'm now doing a 440, which is where I need to be. I still feel like I need to make back the nine seconds I lost. I do a 438. This is great. 438 is 7K. I'm well in where I need to be. Everything is working as planned. I'm not on my pace pro. I've left that behind. I don't care anymore at this point. 
But in terms of 440 was my target, I'm happy with what I'm doing right now. Lap 8 is a bit of a shocker, it's a 452, but it's quite a bit of climbing, so I'm not complaining about the time there. The sun came out and it was quite hot actually at this point, but I was still feeling good and I knew there was a downhill after this climb. And then lap 9, more climbing, but I managed to bring the time down to a 449. I was beginning to feel a tightness just around my hamstring area, but I felt, you know what, that's just one of those things. It'll be fine, and I was going well. So I just thought, let me get away from this climb, and I'll be fine. Lap 10 was a 454, and there wasn't much climbing here. It was actually either quite flat or a bit of a decline. I was really feeling my hamstring at this point, and then it was sort of cascading down to my calves, but I was trying my best to ignore it and just to keep going. I was now outside a target with these last few laps. So I pulled it to a 449. This was slightly better and there was some elevation. So I was pleased with myself that I still had this kind of pace. I was now sort of two seconds per K out of where I needed to be. I think I kind of estimated it at about 20 odd seconds outside of where I needed to be. So I had to lay down the hammer and I didn't manage to do that. This was a 455, a lot of climbing at this point. I was still feeling optimistic because I knew it was a lot of downhill to come and I was kind of getting all the elevation out of the way. So I was optimistic that later on I'll be able to knock out a few 430s and 440s. My right leg had started hurting me at this point, but I was trying to ignore it. This 459 was the hardest climb. My leg hurt, the climb was taking it all out of me. This is the first time where I started to believe I couldn't make it. And when the 145 guy came past me, remember my target is a sub 140, I think all my hope disappeared. And you can see it at lap 14, I did a 501. I'm starting to hobble here because this is where it's really kicking in and the pain is starting to impact me on my running. At lap 15, I try my best to pull it back a little bit and do a 455. But at this point, I know something is wrong. I'm in a lot of pain and every step is actually quite hard. So I'm taking it easy and this is what happens at 5.14. I'm hobbling here. Um, you can probably see the shake a little bit on the camera, but I'm not running at full pace. I'm just hobbling along and thinking, will I stop or will I be able to make it? Lap 17 is no better. You can see people are now streaming past me so easily. I'm hobbling along and trying to find a rhythm that doesn't hurt, a way of doing my steps that don't impact my right leg and give me pain but I just can't do it and the time's dropping off. We get to lap 18 and this is all the downhill bits or the, the flats, the bits that I was meant to like make back time. I'd done all the hard work and here in the easy bit, the straight to get to the finish line, I'm absolutely struggling. This is a 525. I am just in this place where I want to get to the finish line and get this over with. There's some pictures from the event and I look absolutely miserable. So look out for this guy in the white top. I think he had a bit of an injury or something, so he had to stop. Later on, as he came back on and I was struggling, he gave me a pat on my back to encourage me to keep going, which was really helpful. And then just a bit down the road, I saw him supporting another runner, you know, giving them the motivation to keep going. And this is what I love about runners, just supporting each other. At this point, we get to Westminster Bridge. It's a 538. Watch how I go around this corner. I'm limping. You can see it on the camera. I struggled to get around and an absolute pain. Big bed in the distance and I know I'm close to the finish line so I just have to keep on going. I thought okay I'm gonna make it at this point but here 20 kilometers in I had to stop and just put some pressure on my calf at 610. The finish line is literally around the corner and so I try, I hobble on because there's no way I'm walking across the finish line. So this is a 541 all the way to the finish and you can just see people coming past me. To be honest I don't mind I'm helping quite a few individuals capture their moment I think the guy in the blue shirt was doing a PB and I think the lady that just went past me did a PB as well but I'm just hobbling along God knows what I look like at this point and I just want to get myself to the finish line know that I completed it I know I'm nowhere near the time I'm nowhere near my PB this is going to be my slowest ever half marathon but I'm pleased that I got across the finish line and let's be honest I managed to finish and there on your screen, you'll be able to see the outcome. 147.16, seven minutes and 16 seconds away from where I wanted to be really bad. So, that was a car crash. Absolute car crash. Averaging fine, probably for about seven. 
man right like when what's going on right it's quite crowded at the start which i didn't think about so the first 3k were as fresh as a daisy i was just like holding my pace trying to get around the crowd i don't know if it's my hamstring of my car but it was radiating right up to my bum basically i've done the slowest half marathon i've ever done in my life today and um, it was because of this video series that I finished. I think I've made it worse actually finishing. But some amazing people on the way tapping me, telling me to keep going. 41 today. On my birthday, I just ran a half marathon, injured myself, but I still finished. So part of that, I'm still pleased with myself. But I'm um, gonna wait for Hannah and then take it from there. Yeah, I need to get your bag. Well done. So, found um, Hannah. <laughs> what was your time? Um, it was well, I averaged five fifty. So I must have done just over two, yeah. probably two or five. Um, which is far out. Um, but it felt still pretty, really good. Yeah, yeah. especially the injuries you had. Yeah. I need to do a wash up. There's going to be a lot. I'm going to learn from this i think five weeks was probably enough but i should have had a more structured plan i'm very deflated right now um because i was on it i think i was on for it up to 10k and then it just went downhill from there but where do i need to make changes is this injury gonna keep me out for a while um and what things i need to do differently Hey everyone, and we have come to the end of this journey. Firstly, you're gonna see some names to my right scrolling up. I just wanna say thank you to all my supporters. They all donated to my chosen charity, which is the Single Homeless Project, who do fantastic work. So a big thank you to all you guys for supporting me. You're the main reason why I finished the race, if I'm honest. And then we've got the race. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about that because you've seen it all. I'm a bit disappointed and I've got a calf injury to boot, but it's about looking forward. I have unfinished business, so I will be chasing this sub 140. I'll also be looking for some other challenges. So let me know in the comments on other things you think I should go after. You can also mention anything you think I should have done differently to have made this a success. I just wanna say thank you for following me on this journey. As usual, please like, share, of course, subscribe, leave your comments, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.